Hi, I'm David Brown. I'm the Director of Public Works for Vernon Hills and we're out here at our CV Ditch Restoration Project at Hazel Time from Hazel Time to Butterfield Road. Uh, wanted to tell you a little bit about the project and why we implemented the project and some of uh, the stabilization techniques that we're using for the project. Uh, the reason we started this project was there's a situation uh, right over uh, on my right that the bank was severely eroded. Uh, the forces of the, the river were getting up against the bank and underneath it and it actually moved uh, soil uh, six feet high four feet wide and 20 feet long and it moved that from the bank outward and it started pushing further and further back and was getting close to people's utilities. We also have a situation over by Butterfield Road where uh, from the box culvert water was scouring underneath the trees and it was causing situations where the water was going to topple trees potentially hitting the overhead utilities. So. When we discovered this, we went and applied for two different grants, received both of those. So the actual funding of the project, the local match was 42%, roughly 140000 and we were able to secure two other grants, which would help pay for the remaining part of the project. Uh, one of those grants is a 319 uh, EPA grant, and the other one is through the Stormwater Management Commission, uh, Watershed Management Board funds. So with their assistance, with their funding, it assisted us with completing items that we thought were very important because it potentially would cause harm that people wouldn't have those utilities that they rely on. Uh, in terms of the, the different things in the area, some of the, the techniques, over to my side here, there's a, what we call a soil mattress. So what the contractor does is he puts a piece of fabric on the ground, puts a board up, puts soil up against the board, compacts it heavily, removes the board, and then pulls that fabric back, making a soil mattress. Then he staggers the next board back another foot or so, and then repeats that, and it makes a naturalized retaining wall that you're allowed to plant into, and then the, the vegetation helps stabilize the bank because it's very deep-rooted material, and it has higher tensile strengths than some of the man-made material. So we went with this naturalized approach. Some of the other things that we're doing is similar to this uh, riffle. Uh, it has a couple of benefits. One of the benefits is um, it controls the grade of the stream so it doesn't downcut and cause further erosion, which would spread out and cause banks uh, to be unstable. What they do is they dig with a backhoe very deep and they, they put in a three foot wide stone uh, weir and with the, the weir and the stone, as the water starts down cutting back towards the, the stone, it helps stabilize that area. Um, over my right shoulder, there's also a, what we call is a root wad. It's a, the root wad of a tree, and they are also a very good stabilization proj uh, product that is anchored, the top part of the tree is anchored into the bank and the root wad is exposed and it helps anchor the bank. Uh, looking at some other techniques that we have, uh, we have the uh, offshore rock toes and what that does is help channelize the energy back into the center of the stream. Uh, what the water tries to do, if it hits uh, the, the stone, it will turn 90 degrees and redirect the forces away from the bank. So we're protecting the bank by a series of these offshore rock toes. Um, one other water quality benefit that we provided out here was uh, there was pre-existing wetlands in the area. We worked with the Army Corps to 
establish some new wetlands, but instead of in an uphill area, which is not as conducive for wetlands, we created little pockets right adjacent to the stream. So as the storm event occurs, it fills up, it spills over the bank into these pockets, and then it helps water uh, more uh, wetland type areas. Uh, these areas are very conducive to uh, if it's called a ephemeral wetland, which essentially is where you get your frogs and salamanders. So those are really nice, uh, nice areas for habitat. Um, what we are working on today is uh, we're continuing to plant the area. The, the area originally had a lot of softwood, cottonwoods, all the way along the bank. Uh, this stream was originally cut by a farmer and he did this for his agricultural reasons. What we needed to do, instead of having vertical slopes, we needed to cut those banks back at a more stable elevation, a stable grade, that uh, would prevent scouring of the bank and destabilization of the bank. So unfortunately, what trees were along this corridor, most of them had to be removed because they were within the regraded area. So that's why we are replanting the area today. Uh, we're very fortunate that we have volunteers who are also helping us with the planting. And we're here with a couple of volunteers who are out here today to help us plant some material. Uh, with me is Alicia and Paula from Lifeline, and uh, we welcome them to the, to the site and for all their help. Um, specifically, uh, can you tell us a little bit about Lifeline? Sure. Thank you, David. Um, Lifeline Vascular Access is a company that um, provides management services to physicians who um, provide life-saving um, procedures on dialysis patients to open their vascular access. We have 60 centers across the country that we manage, um, and we're located here in Vernon Hills and have been since 2004. Yeah. And this is not their first uh, project helping us volunteering for different uh, environmental sites. Uh, you also helped us with uh, Harvey Lake Project. What did you guys do out at Harvey Lake for us? Um, that was not such a nice day that day. That was cold and rainy in the spring, and we actually helped to um, also shore up the uh, environment there and plant some trees. Okay. And uh, again, today they're out here. You can see them in the background. They're helping with planting some of the uh, smaller material uh, in the background. And uh, the two of them elected to take the largest tree on the site and dig the biggest hole. So we appreciate your enthusiasm. Um, if, you, if you could uh, also tell us how people might be able to get in touch with uh, your company. Sure. The best way to get a hold of us is via our website, lifelinevascularaccess.com. We also have teammates here from Village Health, and they can be found at villagehealth.com. And Paula, how large is your, your company, your organization? Well, between the two business units, we have approximately 100 teammates, that's what we call them, and they work in either our billing, collections, marketing, and disease management departments. And you're located off of Route 60, is that correct? Right off of Hawthorne Parkway. Very good. Uh, the, the village board, the mayor, we really, really appreciate uh, your dedication and this is your second project and we look forward to working with you on other projects too. So thank you very much. You're welcome, thank you.